If you're watching these videos, you know that right now is a very challenging time for captives. So many of the people I talk to and meet with, they spend a lot of time deciding what policies to write in their captive, whether or not a, a captive is right for them. What is the timing of their captive? Should they create a captive? But they often overlook and probably the most important thing is not should you do a captive, but who should you do a captive with? I'm Wes Sirk. I'm the president of Risk Management Advisors, a risk strategies company. And this video is called, What is the Role of a Captive Insurance Manager? A few months ago, the beginning of this year, I got a call from a business owner and he set up a captive at the end of 2019. And this is January, 2020. He got a letter from his captive insurance manager, the person he just created a captive insurance company with, after spending a ton of time doing the research, figuring out what to write. The letter from the captive insurance manager, and it was followed up with a phone call, said they, that manager was under a promoter audit. The manager knew they were under promoter audit when they signed this client, but they didn't give that information to the client. So the client signed it, paid their money, set up the captive, only to find out a month later that this captive insurance manager was under a promoter audit. You need to make sure you spend as much time selecting your captive insurance manager as you do in deciding whether or not you should have a captive insurance company. This video, what I'm gonna go through now are what are the roles of a captive insurance manager? First of all, it's underwriting. The purpose of that as a captive insurance manager is a manager is going to gather all of your existing policies. They're going to go through to figure out what's covered, what's not covered, what your business is, what policy should you have? What ex, uh, exclusions do you have in your policy that you should have removed from your existing policy or coverage for those exclusions added to your insurance company? You need to review all of those. You then need to come up and determine the lines of coverage that are appropriate to put inside your captive. For some people, it's workers' comp, some it's general liability, some it's commercial auto. You, you just It's up to your manager to work with the business owner to figure out what policies you should add into your insurance company. Once you understand what you're going to write, then we get into what's called price making or price setting. So that's working with the actuary to determine the exact amount of premium that's appropriate for that amount of risk. And then you work with your traditional broker to make sure that you have a complete coverage package. So your existing broker puts the correct policies in the market that should be, the exclusions that are appropriate to have it removed from your policies are removed, and your captive has the policies that are important for you to have inside of your own insurance company. Then the business owner, the captive manager, work with coverage counsel to draft the policies so that you have a complete package for your traditional market and your captive insurance company. The next role, critically important, is claims handling. So once you have the policies designed, then with claims handling, you determine what claims are covered and not covered. So you work with clients to ensure that the claims are submitted on a timely basis so that the claims can then be paid from the captive insurance company. Once you have these claims, you've submitted the claims, you work with the actuary. So the captive manager works with actuary to set the reserves for each one of those claims. To give you an example, it's critically important that if your claim is a reserve of $200,000, that it's not on the books and records of the insurance company for $2,000 because then the captive is going to not have enough capital and surplus to pay that claim should it come down the road. There, the claims handling process with the captive manager should be no different 
than the traditional market. If you have a claim, the business owner submits that claim over to the tradition to the captive insurance company, just like they would the traditional carrier. The third role, financial record keeping. So the captive manager on a monthly basis needs to prepare the financial statements, gather all the bank accounts, all the brokerage accounts to figure out what's bought, what's sold. Um, so you have a very accurate picture of where the captive stands financially on a monthly basis. This includes month monthly reconciliations for the checking account, premium invoices. If the clients are paying on, a, on an annual, on a monthly basis, the captive manager has to send out those invoices. And those reports that are prepared on a monthly basis, they have to be available and submitted to the State Department of Insurance regulators, any captive examiners that are looking at the captive, the outside audit firm, the stakeholders of the company and the captive, so they can have an accurate picture of the financial situation of that captive, and the claims handling department of the captive manager to make sure there's, there's your check and balance, where I talked about before, the claims need to be set, the reserves for the claims need to be set with the actuary, but now it's the financial department that needs to make sure that all of those reserves are accurately represented in the financial records that get submitted. And then working with the captive owners, their CPAs, outside tax counsel, and the investment advisors to make sure everybody's on the same page and this business, which is what a captive is, this business is running efficiently and effectively. Now, one thing we haven't talked about is we have a fair number of clients who do outside lending. You know, they're not lending to their company, but they may have done a first or second trust deed. There's a mortgage. So the captive manager needs to calculate on a monthly basis, what is that, all of those interest statements, all those mortgage statements, collect that money in, process it on the books of the captive, get it deposited to the correct accounts. All that stuff is critically important. And then last but not least, one of the most important things is the captive regulatory compliance. So the captive manager, together with the client, they put together a submission to the Department of Insurance. The Department of Insurance gets that, they approve it. But the manager needs to make sure that every potential issue is covered in that initial submission. They are, they're the ones that deal with the attorneys, the actuaries, the CPAs, you know, the regulators. So everyone is all rowing in the same direction. They're the ones who schedule, attend um, the board meetings because the captive insurance company, it's a business. So no business operates without a board meeting. So it's important that the captive insurance company have an annual, semi-annual, or quarterly, in a lot of cases, board meeting to go over the finances, the premiums due, premiums receivable, what's, what's happened, any claims, investment experience, all of that stuff so everyone's on the same page and there are no surprises. The captive manager has to prepare all of the required documentation for the Department of Insurance. And let me tell you, it's a lot. You, in order to maintain a compliant insurance company is a lot of documentation with the Department of Insurance. They also have to prepare any dividend or loan requests from the captive insurance company. The owner of the captive just can't go take money at will. That all needs to be approved through the Department of Insurance and the captive manager is the quarterback to make sure that all that happens and on a timely basis and done correctly. And then once the captive, let's say the business owner sells the business or they decide they don't want to be in the captive insurance business anymore, it's up to the captive manager to shut down or dissolve the captive insurance company. There are many different options and we'll cover that in a different video, but the timely and correct dissolution or shutdown of a captive insurance company is just as important as setting up the captive insurance company. So we've gone through the key roles of the captive insurance manager in detail, but to summarize, there's four main things. First, underwriting. Second, claims handling. Third, financial record keeping. And then lastly, captive regulatory compliance. When you have all those things working together, you have a great 
system, you have a great set of facts, and you have a smooth running insurance company. You upset any one of those four, and you have suddenly, think of it like a stool, a four-legged stool. Any of those things gone makes the stool wobbly and unreliable. Thank you for watching this video. We just updated our 2020 Ultimate Guide to Captive Insurance Companies. If you go down below and you put a comment that says, send me the Ultimate Guide, we'll make sure we'll send you a DM with a link that you can download it. I think you'll find a ton of valuable information in there that you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback from people who said, wow, this is better than, well, they say it's better than Taken Captive, which is the book that I wrote. But, you know, download your, your version today, just put a comment, and we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.